Hello everyone. Let us begin with the fourth module of Engineering Statistics and Linear Algebra. Uh, before we go ahead with the syllabus, uh, we will try to recall whatever we have studied uh, in the lower semesters or lower classes that is introduction to number systems. Let us see five sets of number systems. First one being the set of natural numbers denoted by the letter N. And the example is 1, 2, 3 up to infinity we can carry on. And here the numbers, these are positive numbers or non-negative integers. And it can be inclusive of 0. Let us see what are the operations that are allowed in case of set of natural numbers. First one is we can add uh, two natural numbers. When I add two natural numbers, whatever result I am going to get, it is going to be a member of the set of natural numbers. That is, for example, if I take 2 and 3, which are natural numbers, when I add, I get 5 and 5 is a member of this n. But I cannot subtract two natural numbers because if I have to subtract a higher value from a lower value, then the result is going to be negative. So therefore, 2 minus 3 will give us minus 1. It is not a member of this set of natural numbers. Multiplication is possible because when we multiply two natural numbers, for example, 2 and 3, I am going to get the result as 6 and this 6 is a member of this set of natural numbers n. But division is not possible because when I divide, uh, I am going to get a fractional value sometimes. That is for example, if I take 2 divided by 3, then I get to get 0.666 and it is not a member of n. So therefore, I can conclude it as uh, only two operations are possible in case of set of natural numbers. I can add two natural numbers. I can multiply two natural numbers. Result, whatever I am going to get, it is going to be a member of set of these natural numbers. We will go to the second one, which is set of integers. It consists of both positive as well as negative uh, numbers or integers. And here in this case, I can add two integers or I can subtract two integers because negative integers are allowed here. I can multiply two integers. Only one operation is not possible that is division because you can see that these are integer values. But when I take two by three like previous, I am going to get a fractional value. It is not a member of this set of integers z. We will see the next set of uh, number system that is q. It is called as set of rational numbers. P and q belong to z because they are the members of uh, integers. Uh, integer set uh, p and q are the integers. And when we divide P by Q and whatever result we are going to get, that will be a member of Q and provided the denominator term Q should not be equal to 0. So, in general, I can say that rational numbers are the ratios of integers and popularly known as fractions. For example, 1 and 2. Uh, they belong to Z and when I divide 1 by 2, I am going to get the answer as 0.5 or I can write it as 2 by 5 that I am going to get it as 0.4. See 0 0.4, 0 0.5, they belong to Q. So, Q can contain the integers as well as fractional values. Now, we will go to the next set of number system that is called as R. It is a set of real numbers. It consists of 
both rational as well as irrational numbers algebraic as well as non algebraic numbers which are popularly known as transcendental numbers uh, and those numbers are nothing but pi that is 3.14159 it goes up to infinity for example e 2.71828 it can go up to infinity and these are the numbers they are called as non algebraic numbers and this number can be defined as by an infinite series look at this diagram and first we defined n it had only positive integers then we went ahead with integers integers can consist of all the uh, all the elements of natural numbers as well as it includes negative numbers that means uh, non positive numbers are also included in terms of integers therefore i can say that integer includes the natural numbers uh, n as well as some non negative numbers then comes the rational numbers rational numbers can contain the natural numbers can contain the integer numbers and it also contains the fractional values such as 1 by 2 2.25 minus 2.3 they are denoted by the symbol q now comes the real algebraic numbers and uh, these real algebraic numbers are, are they are called as or non algebraic numbers these real algebraic and non algebraic numbers together along with these rational integer natural they make this real numbers so real numbers consists of all kinds of uh, numbers natural integer rational irrational real algebraic non algebraic all these values are there in r we'll move on to the next set that is called as c it's a set of complex numbers and it is usually represented as uh, z equal to x plus i y where x is the real value y is the imaginary part and all the four operations such as addition multiplication subtraction and division are possible let us try to define the next term which is called as fields and the field is uh, nothing but it is a set of elements uh, where we can observe the multiplications and alas additions and q which is a set of rational numbers r which is a set of real numbers c which is a set of complex numbers we have observed that addition subtraction multiplication and division are possible even in the case of fields all these operations are uh, possible so in the any two elements can be multiplied in a field but it is not allowed in case of vector space in the case of vector space we have got only scalar multiplication is allowed and the quantity scalar quantity with which we are going to multiply we have to take it from the field next term that we have to define is vector space before we move on to the extra space let us try to understand what is meant by a vector a vector is a quantity which has got both magnitude as well as direction and usually uh, if this is a vector length of Uh, this vector represents the magnitude and the uh, direction is given the, by the orientation in the space let us try to define now what is meant by a vector space a vector space is a mathematical structure which is formed by collection of elements and those elements are vectors and these vectors can be added together or we can multiply by a number which is a scalar quantity and the number can be a real number it can be a complex number or a rotational number and the best example for uh, vectors is a force and if you see a force if i have two forces f1 and f2 
which forms a vector space. I can always add these two forces to get the total force and the total force is the sum of F1 and F2. Similarly, I can multiply F1 with the constant term. Say it is 2, then it becomes 2 times F1, which is multiplied by a constant scalar quantity that is 2. So, I get this as 2 times F1. So, we see the next definition that is Euclidean space r to the power n. Space r to the power n consists of all column vectors with n components. For example, if I have a two-dimensional one, which is x-axis and the y-axis, this is x-axis and the y-axis, a point here which represents x1 and y1, it represents a two-dimensional space because I have x as well as y coordinates. It is usually represented as r square or I can even have r cube which is a three-dimensional space. When it is r to the power n, it is n-dimensional space. In the next video, let us study something about a vector space and what are the axioms uh, defined for vector space as well as we try to solve some problems under vector space. Thank you.